Alright guys, I am back with my review of this week's episode of WWE Monday Night Raw for November 19th, 2012. And even though I liked a lot of stuff on this week's episode, it really felt like three hours. And by Seamus Sandow, I was really feeling it. And it just, it didn't really matter how good some of the stuff was because it was just three hours. And after Survivor Series last night, it was just a lot to sit through. Um, but I did enjoy a lot of stuff on this week's episode of Raw. And before I get into Raw, I do want to mention that I am doing my 500th video tomorrow. It's going to be a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for me, I put a video up where you can leave the questions in the comments. So I'll put that video in the description. So if you have any questions, wrestling, movies, whatever, just leave them in the comments on that video and I'll answer them all tomorrow. Um, but anyways, on to Raw. Ryback comes out. And I noticed there's a guy wearing a Ring of Honor shirt sitting behind the king. And I thought this was weird because normally they would confiscate something like this. But here they just let him wear it the entire night. They normally take signs and things from Ring of Honor. Um, so yeah, that was kind of strange. But Ryback cuts his promo. And he talks about Punk, how he was going to feast on him last night. But he employed three men to take food out of a starving man's mouth. I thought this was a little cheesy, but it's Ryback. He's not the best talker. It's his first big promo, really. So I figured I'd cut him some slack on this. And he says he's going to eat Punk. It's his prey. He calls him out, Punk and all the NXT guys. And he says that if they don't show up, he's going to destroy the place. So Vicky comes out and says he'll be fined or suspended if he tries to tear the place up. And she says that she enjoys him destroying people. So let's see how big his appetite really is. And we get Ryback versus Tensai for the third time. Why do they keep acting like this has never happened before? This is the third time. In like a month and a half, two months maybe? If that. So yeah, it's just weird how they always act like this has never happened before. And it was what you would expect from this match. Ryback's throwing him around outside. He's muttering, feed me, punk. And he beats him with the shell-shocked. He looked pretty strong. I mean, Tensai hit the senton on him, and he kicked out without even getting a one count. But he hits shell-shocked for the win. Backstage, Sheamus is bitching at a referee from Survivor Series. Wade Barrett versus Kofi. Barrett works Kofi's eye of all things during this match and then he hits the bull hammer for the win. We see that November 21st The Soup is going to have a special episode with WWE stars on there at 10.30. I thought that looked pretty entertaining actually. I plan to DVR that. Heyman goes to see Punk about his celebration later. Stryker comes up and asks Punk about the NXT guys. Punk gets pissed off. Says he had nothing to do with that attack either. Oksana versus Caitlyn. Caitlyn wins after dropping Oksana across her knee. This was actually not bad, I thought. I think Oksana's actually improving somewhat. Brodus Clay versus Antonio Cesaro. Our truth is on commentary. He says he's there to scout Cesaro from the rooter to the tutor. <laughs> and Cesaro wins clean with the neutralizer on Brodus, which looks impressive. I mean, we've already seen it, but... This was another thing they acted like had never happened before, but this was impressive. Vicky comes out with some witnesses to the AJ Cena scandal. This was painful. This entire segment was just horrible. AJ comes out. She's pissed off. Cena comes out. He makes out with AJ. Dolph attacks him. Cena messes his knee up, running up the ramp, but they, they did some stuff with it later, so it's a work, but... Yeah, it was just a horrible segment. Del Rio versus Orton in a 2 out of 3 falls match. This was really good. I've lost a lot of interest in this feud. I hope this is it. But I was actually really into this match. I enjoyed this. Orton gets the first fall thanks to Del Rio getting disqualified after throwing Orton's arm into the ring post repeatedly. Orton taps to the arm bar. Ricardo trips Orton and the ref sends him to the back. Del Rio actually tries to RKO Orton. Orton throws him off, hits the RKO for the win. 
pretty good stuff. Cena gets his knee wrapped up backstage. And then we get Kali versus Primo and Epico in a handicap match. I don't know what the hell this was. Hornswoggle comes out. He's got flowers. He gives them to Rosa Mendez. And when she tries to kiss him, he presses a button and water shoots in her face. Kali wins the Punjabi plunge on Epico. And that was it. This entire thing was just stupid and pointless. I did not care for this at all. At first I was thinking, Hornswoggle's got flowers. Maybe they're from Natalia. You remember that angle they were trying to set up on SmackDown like two, three weeks ago that went nowhere? I thought maybe they're going to do something with that. Or maybe they're from Del Rio. Or maybe they're from Hornswoggle to Rosa and Del Rio's going to get jealous. Nope. Just random crap. No rhyme or reason to it. Heyman's pissed off at Punk celebration, and he wants balloons. We still didn't get any balloons. Otunga versus Miz. Miz wins with Skull Crushing Finale. This wasn't bad. I know a lot of people hate Otunga for some reason. I think he's got a lot of potential, and I thought this was okay. Sheamus comes out, says Big Show. Made it personal, attacking Regal. He calls out Show. Big Show says they have nothing to talk about. He already beat him for the title. He's the champion. We get Sheamus versus Sandow. Sheamus wins the bro kick. It was a pretty good match, but it was just the three hours was really starting to get to me at this point. And I was just thinking, damn, come on. AJ goes to see Vicky. Tamina's there. AJ says that Cena's hurt, and if Vicky won't do anything about it, she will. So AJ runs into the men's locker room, where apparently we notice that the 3MB shower together. They're all wearing towels. And I don't know, that just looked funny to me, but she runs up to Dolph. Dolph destroys her verbally. Says she's just trash. She freaks out and attacks him. Cena pulls her off. Dolph attacks Cena's knee. And he throws him through the bathroom stalls. And it was a it was actually a pretty cool backstage fight. I like this. We get an update on Cena's knee. It's hurt. Sin Cara and Mysterio versus Team Hell No. Uh, primetime players on commentary. This match wasn't bad, but the commentary was so insane that I, I didn't even pay attention to the match at all. It's like when you listen to the radio and you kind of tune everything else out and you're just listening to like a radio show and you just kind of get into that and like the conversation. That's exactly what happened to me in this match. Like, I was just so busy listening to their conversation that I didn't pay attention to anything that was happening in the ring. And they were talking about the dish rags and these jokes and Cole was talking about Darren Young not talking and it was just really weird but for some reason it was entertaining to me. So anyways, Mysterio hits a 619 on Kane. He goes for the splash, Kane catches him. He tries to choke slam him but the primetime players hit the ring. The tag teams actually fight him off. It wasn't a big deal. Mysterio 619s, both of them. Um, Kane chokes, slams Titus, and Kara hits a swanton on Darren, so that was it. Heyman tells Punk that he guarantees no one will mess up his celebration tonight. So, of course, that means someone will, or at least try to. And I was actually thinking, this is just kind of a out there theory that popped into my head when I was watching the celebration. What if Paul Heyman turns on CM Punk in favor of Brock Lesnar and at WrestleMania we get Brock versus Punk? I don't know. I mean, probably not, but it's just something I thought of. So during Punk's celebration, they're showing the records of the top 10 longest reigning champions. No one's ever beating Bruno, by the way. It's just, it's not going to happen. Uh, but they start talking about Bruno, Hogan, Steve Austin, and Ryback comes out. And he gets attacked by the NXT guys before he can get to the ring. He's actually doing a pretty good job fighting him off, but the numbers overwhelm him, and they eventually powerbomb him through the announce table again. And the last thing we see is Punk standing on Ryback, holding the title. That was it. That was Raw this week. Um, I was looking forward to this week's episode to see what they did with the NXT guys. 
but they did they did the same thing. So I guess we have to wait till next week because you know nothing's happening on SmackDown. I mean nothing. Um, I bet on SmackDown they're going to continue to build up Sheamus versus Big Show again in a chairs match at TLC, and that's about it. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't see a lot of exciting things happening on SmackDown this week. So we have to wait till next week's Raw to really see where they're going to take this. Um, I don't know. I mean, Brad Maddox is out there. Heyman was talking to Brad Maddox last week. And there's a lot of ways they could go with this. I would like to see a big stable with these guys, Brad Maddox, Heyman, Punk, and then you bring in Brock Lesnar, and that would be awesome. Probably not going to happen, though. I'm just really afraid right now because I know Rollins and Ambrose have a ton of talent. And I just would hate to see Ryback destroy these guys like they're jobbers. So I'm hoping they don't do something like that. But WWE doesn't have the best track record when it comes to bringing in a group of guys like this. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, overall, not really a bad show this week. I enjoyed most of the show. It's just three hours is a long time to sit through a TV show every single week right after a pay-per-view and it's just it can be draining even if it is good and I mean it wasn't like the best show ever but I thought they did some good stuff here tonight so anyways that's my review of this week's episode of Raw hope you guys like this video leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments and thanks for watching Bye. cuts his promo and he talks about punk how he was going to feast on him last night but he employed three men to take food out of a starving man's mouth. I thought this was a little cheesy, but it's Ryback. He's not the best talker. It's his first big promo, really. So I figured I'd cut him some slack on this. And he says he's going to Survivor Series last night. It was just a lot to sit through. Um, but I did enjoy a lot of stuff on this week's episode of Raw. And... Before I get into Raw, I do want to mention that I am doing my 500th video tomorrow. It's going to be a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for me, I put a video up where you can leave the questions in the comments. So I'll put that video in the description. So if you have any questions, wrestling, movies, whatever, just leave them in the comments on that video and I'll answer them all tomorrow. Um, but anyways, on to Raw, Ryback comes out. And I noticed there's a guy wearing a Ring of Honor shirt sitting behind the king. And I thought this was weird because normally they would confiscate something like this. But here they just let him wear it the entire night. They normally take signs and things from Ring of Honor. Um, so yeah, that was kind of strange. But Ryback... Alright guys, I am back with my review of this week's episode of WWE Monday Night Raw for November 19th, 2012. And even though I liked a lot of stuff on this week's episode, it really felt like three hours. And by Seamus Sandow, I was really feeling it. And it just, it didn't really matter how good some of the stuff was because it was just three hours. And after Sir Eats Punk, it's his prey, he calls him out, Punk and all the NXT guys. And he says that if they don't show up, he's going to destroy the place. So Vicky comes out and says he'll be fined or suspended if he tries to tear the place up. And she says that she enjoys him destroying people. So let's see how big his appetite really is. And we get Ryback versus.